Buoyan National High School and its commitment to intercultural learning. If all learners have access to experiences that transcend geographical and cultural barriers, we can expect to have better citizens of the global community in the years to come. Global citizens who embrace diversity, inclusivity, empathy, tolerance, and respect are those who look beyond race, creed, ideology, gender, or economic and social status. We are so fortunate to have organizations like AFS that reach out to schools by offering bigger opportunities to learners that encourage them to step out of their comfort zones and see the world. In 2009, Boyan National High School started its linkage with AFS Intercultural Programs Philippines, an international non-government organization which implements various programs that promote intercultural learning. Four programs have been granted to selected students from Boyan National High School. First, the Japan East Asia Network of Exchange for Students and Youths or more popularly known as Genesis. It was a short program fully funded by the Japanese government. Next on the list, the Active Citizenship Engagement Program for Filipino Youth, or more popularly known as the ACE program. It was fully funded by the U.S. Embassy in coordination with the Department of Education Division of Makati, the local government of Makati and AFS Philippines. Next is the 11-month exchange program in the United States of America, the Kennedy Lugar Youth Exchange and Study Program. It's fully funded by the Department of State of the United States of America. The newest one is the Asia Kakehashi Project. It's another program that is fully funded by the Japanese government. Buoyan National High School's connection with AFS Intercultural Programs Philippines started with Jalin Yamelo Rivera, a 15-year-old fourth-year high school student. She applied for the Japan East Asia Network of Exchange for Students and Youths, more popularly known as Genesis, a 17-day study tour in Japan in December 2009. Among the hundreds of applicants, 64 were selected and Jalen was among them. Genesis then was a short high school exchange program fully sponsored by the Japanese government and implemented in the Philippines by AFS Intercultural Programs Philippines. Let's take a look into Jalen's cherished memories in Japan. As expected, Jalen took a picture of their arrival at Narita International Airport. In the next photo, we can see her with two of her Japanese classmates at the Japanese high school she attended briefly. And here is Jalen trying the transparent umbrella. And here she is relaxing. In the next photo, we can see her having some fun with some of her co-exchange students from the Philippines. They are doing some jump shots. Jalen tasted the best foods in Japan, like this one, this one, and this one. Jalen stayed in Japan for only 17 days, but we believe that those 17 days were among the most memorable days in her life.
The first student from Boyan National High School to qualify for the U.S. Department of State fully sponsored Canada Lugar Youth Exchange and Study Program was Azir Diaz Elegado. He is part of KLS Batch 11, academic year 2014 to 2015. Azir was hosted in Luxembourg, Wisconsin, USA and spent his 11th grade at Luxembourg Castro High School. Azir did well in his American high school. He garnered high honors. Aside from academic honors, among the other highlights of Azir's U.S. journey were learning another foreign language, which was Spanish, staying with two amazing American host families, and completing the required number of hours for volunteer work by the U.S. Department of State. Let's travel back in time to Azir's awesome exchange year in the USA. Just a few days after his arrival in Wisconsin, Hazir's welcome family brought him to an apple farm. There, Hazir experienced one of his first in the USA, and that was apple picking. A very memorable event that Hazir attended in his American high school was the homecoming. Let's take a look at his homecoming photo with his friends and classmates. The lady in dark pink was Azir's host sister, Tori. November is a very important month to every exchange student in the USA. During this month, the International Education Week is celebrated. And each exchange student is given the opportunity to present something to his school, particularly to a class. So you, in this photo, we can see Hazir doing his PowerPoint presentation. The presentation included data or information about his life in the Philippines, which includes his family, his school, Boya National High School, his city, General Santa City, and his country as a whole. In the presentation, he also mentioned about how he got into the KLS program. Let's see more of Hazir's important moments in the United States in the next slide. I really love this photo of Hazir and his co-exchange student Kalpana Sharma from India. I told Azir that the photo is a very good material for a print commercial for any brand of toothpaste. When Azir was in the big window city of Chicago, he visited the Cloud Gate, or more popularly known as the Bean. It is a monumental work of art in Chicago. Try to guess the event when this photo was taken. As you can see, Azir wore a green hat, green goggles, and green sweater. Well, it was St. Patrick's Day in the USA in March 2015. On that day, Azir joined a photo contest and he bagged the third prize. Here's Azir with his co-exchange students under the placement organization, STS Foundation. Hazir was born on New Year's Day. He celebrated his 17th birthday in the USA. His host family had a customized cake for him with the Philippine flag design on top of the cake. Another first for Hazir in the USA was dog sledding. Yes, he and his co-exchange students experienced riding in a sled being pulled by dogs. 
Among the interesting times Azir had during his exchange unit included those numerous road trips. During his road trips with his local coordinator, Miss Deb, they brought along with them Miss Deb's dogs. If we will put all of Azir's photos during his exchange here in this presentation, certainly it would need more and more slides. Thus, we have chosen just some of them. There's one BNHS alumnus who was able to receive two program grants through AFS Intercultural Programs Philippines. In January 2014, he was among the 12 students from different regions in the Philippines to qualify for the 11-day short exchange program in the city of Makati. The active citizenship engagement program for youth fully sponsored by the U.S. Embassy in coordination with the local government of Makati, Department of Education, Division of Makati, and AFS Intercultural Programs Philippines. That time, he was 14 years old and in grade A. We are referring to Albanzar Abdul Numangal. While in Makati, Al stayed with the host family. His host mom was a teacher at the public high school he attended for a few days during his exchange. Al and his fellow exchange students were able to visit the U.S. Embassy as well as Department of Education, Division of Makati. Let's have a glimpse of Albanzar's short exchange in Makati. Here's Al with his host family. According to Al, he never ceases to communicate with his host family, particularly with his host mom. His host mom is a teacher at the public high school where he attended for a few days. Here's Al showing his best smile. This photo was taken at the public high school where he attended for a few days. See how he was so engaged in a class discussion with his classmates. I was able to have a photo opportunity with then Programs Director of AFS, Mr. Frashkan Bukoy Abdurrahim. Sir Frashkan is now the National Director of AFS Philippines. Here's Al enjoying a video game at a mall in Makati. And finally, reaping the fruit of his 11-day short exchange program, the ACE program for Filipino youth, is Al having a photo opportunity with officials from AFS Philippines, the U.S. Embassy, the local government of Makati, and the Department of Education Division of Makati. When Almanzar was in grade 10, he applied for the Kennedy Lugar Youth Exchange and Study Program. Fortunately, he was among the 29 finalists who stayed and studied in the USA from August 2016 to June 2017. He's part of KLES Batch 13. Al was hosted in Tanina City, Washington, USA. He had the privilege to live with two loving host families. Al attended Tanina High School as an 11th grader. His classmates and schoolmates jokingly called him Beast because he was able to play different sports like American football, soccer, and basketball. Besides, Al enjoyed doing volunteer work, which was facilitated by Aspect Displacement Organization.
Let's take a trip down memory lane to see Albazar's amazing year's journey. Here's Al with his American host family, the Steins. This photo was taken during winter season. Mike Stein, Al's host dad, is a commercial pilot. He left Al sit in the cockpit of the plane he's flying. And now, look at the excitement on Al's face. It's his first time to experience snow. Everything outside turned white. Sports have played a great part in Al's exchange year. Here's Al in his football uniform. And here is a nice capture of Al during a soccer game. Al played as a wide receiver in his football team. Here's a photo of him with his teammates. One of the fun moments Al had with his friends in the USA was having ice cream party. Here's a photo of Al with his classmates and teammates at their favorite spot at Tenino High School. And here's another photo of Al. This time, he's with his co-exchange students. Majority of them were from Europe. That's a totem pole beside Al. A totem pole is a pole or pillar carved and painted with a series of totemic symbols representing family lineage and often mythical or historical incidents and erected by Indian tribes of the northwest coast of North America. During his exchange year, Al learned much from his volunteer work facilitated by Aspect, his placement organization. Among the things he did was putting together prefabricated homes for refugees and the homeless. A haircut cost much in the States, but Al was fortunate to have a very generous host mom. His host mom brought him to a salon for a haircut. Al's 11 month exchange year in the USA had given him learning experiences which he will definitely treasure for the rest of his life. Alban Zor is now in his third year in Bachelor of Education, major in English at Mindanao State University in General Santo City. It has been almost five years after his exchange year in the USA. How about hearing from him now? Greetings of peace and prosperity. I hope that everyone is doing great and healthy watching this video. So the Kelius program, the Kennedy Lugo Youth Exchange and Study Program has influenced my intercultural learning in terms of locating the positive side in all aspects that I'm looking. For instance, um, we know that conflict is dynamic process, but we always locate for the commonalities with one another. Uh, as a matter of fact, I know that um, everyone has different perspectives globally, um, everyone has different views, but we have to locate the positive one so that we can spread peace, so that we can penetrate in promoting peace, in, in fostering love and friendship. So that's what I've learned in Kelly's program, to, to actually find the positivity in everything that we are doing because that can help us to promote peace and, and in our mindset as well. I'm very thankful that the Kennedy Lugar Youth Exchange and Study Program helped me to build that. I'm very thankful for the Kennedy Lugar Youth Exchange and Study Program because it helped me to build myself and all my senses. The first one is um, the sense of identity. It really helps me to, to, to build my inner peace, like to be more adaptive in all different aspects, to be more flexible, 
and to seek discomfort despite of differences and um, different perceptions. I'm really happy that it helps me as well to locate um, my strengths and weaknesses, my what I'm good at, my field, like all of those things. It helps me because of Kennedy Lugar Youth Exchange and Study Program. The second one is my sense of belongingness. Uh, joining the Kelly's program it really we really emphasize your sense of belongingness because you will you will really uh, immerse to different cultures, different values, and different characteristics. But you have to um, you will really realize that all of all of us are equal or all, all of us are are the same despite of color, despite of beliefs, and all of those. So it really helps me to you you to be more to be more adaptive of, of differences. And the last one, my sense of purpose. Uh, after joining the Kelias program, it really helps me to locate what I'm good at and then to pursue my uh, pursue my purpose in community. Like um, what I, what can I contribute? What advocacy do I do I make for the for the betterment of the community? So because of that, because of all the experience that I have because of Kelias, it really helps me to be a peace builder advocate uh, that can promote peace through education, through anything that I have right now. I'm very thankful for the Kennedy Luger Youth Exchange and Study Program. Thank you so much. Those were inspiring and enlightening words on peace, positivity, self-awareness, and finding one's purpose in life. Thank you very much, Al. In January 2019, Kenneth Busako Masankai, a bubbly and smart grade 9 student, was elected as one of the 17 Filipino high school students to compose the second batch of exchange students under the Asia Kakihashi Project, a fully funded program by the Japanese government in coordination with AFS Intercultural Programs Philippines. Kenneth and his companions stayed and studied in Japan from August 2019 to March 2020. Kenneth stayed in a dormitory in Chiba, Japan. He commuted every day to Toyo University High School in Ibaraki. His daily travel back and forth included two train rides and one bus ride. Although a beginner, Kenneth tried his best to communicate in Japanese. He gained plenty of learnings not only within the four corners of his Japanese high school. Kenneth had the opportunity to live with three Japanese host families during the winter break and days prior to his departure from Japan in March 2020. He was also able to visit a number of cultural and historical sites. Let's reminisce precious moments of Kenneth in the land of the rising sun. This is a photo of Kenneth at the facade of his Japanese high school, Toyo University High School. Halloween is also celebrated in Japan. Kenneth and his classmates presented a play during the celebration. Kenneth and his groupmates were delivering a report in their English class when this photo was taken. Kenneth Japanese High School issued him three sets of school uniform as well as PE uniform covering three seasons, summer, fall, and winter. Here's Kenneth in his summer school uniform. Kenneth had the privilege to play soccer in Japan. He was given tutorial lessons in the Japanese language. Here he is doing his best as he wrote items on the board in Nihongo. Holding a flaglet of the Philippines Kenneth was all smiles because this was the day 
He delivered a speech in the school. Listening to him was the entire school population. Kenneth with his host family. As mentioned earlier, he lived with three host families, two during winter break and one prior to his departure in Japan. He is Kenneth in downtown Tokyo. Kenneth enjoyed his daily train rides. With him in this photo were some of his classmates and schoolmates. One of his classmates invited him to their place to witness a local festival. One of Kenneth's winter host families brought him to Nagano. It's a place in Japan where there is heavy snowfall. AFS Japan celebrated its 60th year in 2020. Kenneth was among those who attended the event. Within this photo were exchanged students from different parts of the world. Truly, Kenneth's Kakihashi experience has made a great impact in his life as a student and as a member of the global community. Volunteerism is one thing that is being promoted by AFS. It's great to see volunteers coming from different sectors in the society. Aside from BNHS students who have become AFS alumni, two BNHS teachers have become active volunteers of the organization. Noralyn Joy of Real Ramos, a social studies teacher, has been a volunteer since 2009. She has been helping in the recruitment of possible applicants for the different programs of AFS. She has helped in facilitating AFS activities in the local AFS Jansen community, such as regional KLS camps, KLS parents, schools orientation, home visits with program qualifiers and their families, and welcome activities for AFS program returnees, as well as for exchange students from other countries. Teacher Joy Ramos had also been selected to chaperone KLS qualifiers from both Jensen and Devil to national camps in 2015, 2016, and 2017. In 2018, she was the travel chaperone of the 30 KLS finalists from the Philippines to the USA. She was with the students at Hilton Dulles Hotel in Herndon, Virginia, Washington, D.C. area, USA, from August 7 to 9, 2018. I'm going to share some highlights of my being an AFS volunteer. Here's a photo of me with KLS Batch 13 from Jensen Community. We were at Jensen Airport when this photo was taken. I was there to send them off to Manila for the pre-departure orientation. I'm so proud of these guys, the late Sharjah Tia Schweik, Regine Kent Kamid, and Albenzar Lumangal. I've seen their transformation after their exchange year in the USA. I highly appreciate the projects and advocacies they get involved with. This photo was taken during the regional KLS camp in 2016. With me were Azir Elegado and Nelly Wata, both are KLS alumni batch 11. The lady in black was Jalen Rivera, a Genesis alumna year 2009. That's me with KLS alumnus from AFS Katabato community, John Badawi. John and I were raters and facilitators 
at the National KLS Camp at Apple Tree Resort and Hotel in Opal, Misamis Oriental in November 2015. AFS Johnson Community was invited to the regular session of the Sanguni El Panunsod of Jensen in July 2019. The three girls in mint green shirts were exchange students from Japan and Turkey. Here's a recent photo of AFS Jensen community. This was taken in November 2020 during the welcome party for the KLS Batch 16. Jessil Basco, Yusra Ali, Kenneth Lloyd Manonbilang, and Mir Rasiv Tayamen, as well as for the Asia Kakihashi Alumni Batch 2. And it's the first time for Jensen community to have alumni of this new program. The alumni are Kenneth Masankai, Christian David Innocencio, and Angel Joy Alayakya. This photo was taken during the parents' school's orientation held at Holy Trinity College of General Santa City. Our senior AFS volunteer, Madam Hadija Swid Odoya, was with us during the orientation. We fondly call her Mom Jiang. That's me and Hanan Del Rio, KLS Batch 5, during the panel interview at the regional KLS camp in 2019. Here's a photo opportunity with Honorable Joey Pelaez. He's part of the Board of Directors of AFS Philippines. This was taken during the National KLS Camp in Cagayan de Oro City in 2016. That time, Honorable Pelaez was the Vice Gover Governor of Misamis Oriental. With me and Honorable Pelaez in the photo was my very good friend from Manila, Madame Marivic Palma. She's also a public school teacher like me. And she had served AFS Philippines as interpreter for the deaf applicants for the KLS program. A huge opportunity was given to me by AFS Philippines. I was elected as the travel chaperone of KLS Batch 15. Join me in reminiscing some unforgettable moments of my U.S. journey with KLS Batch 15. That's me with the big four from AFS Jensen community, including Sarangani and South Katabata. Jik Lirai Akupan from Malungon National High School and he was hosted in Michigan, USA. Alexandra Ali Pelmin from General Santos City National High School and Holy Trinity College of General Santos City and she was hosted in Georgia, USA. Raquel Bukayao Hatulan from Tupi National High School and Holy Trinity College of General Santo City. And she was hosted in Indiana, USA. And Ansari Kato Guzman of Ireneo El Santiago National High School. He was also hosted in Indiana, USA. This photo was taken at Narita International Airport in Japan while waiting for our flight to Detroit, Michigan, USA. I just couldn't contain the excitement as I found myself inside a train at Detroit Metropolitan Airport. I'm sure that Raquel, Kusandi Aldavo, and Jeep felt the same. Yes, it was our first train ride within an, within an airport. So far, we don't have such thing in the Philippines. 
And here's the mandatory photo of Katie Elias, batch 15 with me, their chaperone. This was taken at Detroit Metropolitan Airport, our entry point in the USA, while waiting for our flight to Washington, D.C. Our flight was delayed for about five hours. The Yes or Arrivals orientation was held at Hilton Dallas Hotel in Herndon, Washington, D.C. area, Virginia, USA. It was like a mini General Assembly of the United Nations Organization. Eleven nations were represented. And there were over 200 participants, including students and chaperones. Here's a photo of me with my hotel roommate, Miss Munarin Jurasakul from Thailand. I had a wacky pose with Ernest the Kuliyuyap from AFS Pagadian Community. He's the boy in black jacket. With us were two students from Turkey. Here's another photo of me with KLS Batch 15 from the Philippines. This time it was at the facade of Hilton Dallas Hotel. Unfortunately, only 23 were present. Those who were not able to join us might be busy preparing their luggage for the departure to their host states the next day. That's me with a chaperone from both South Africa and Mozambique. She's a lawyer by profession. Her name, Attorney Neosa Rodriguez. And that's me with the chaperone from Ghana, Mr. Yahaya Abdusalam. He's a teacher. During the Yes Arrivals orientation, there were six breakout sessions. I was assigned at the Sully Room with Miss Carla Bailey as the lead facilitator. There were two other chaperones, Mr. Eric from Kenya and Miss Muti from Indonesia. As to the students, four from the Philippines were there. Jaira Sampang from Manila, Robbie Jacinto also from Manila, Rusandi Capidos from Davao City, and Alson Porticos from Basilan. I can say that students from the Philippines are highly competent when it comes to the English language. I felt so proud as I listened to Robbie Jacinto from Manila deliver the output of their group. My task as travel chaperone of the brave and smart exchange students from the Philippines was a tremendous learning experience for me beyond the four corners of the classroom. For this, I am forever grateful to both AFS Philippines and AFS USA, and of course, to the U.S. Department of State, the main sponsor of the KLS program. A fabulous bonus to my U.S. journey was my side trip to Alaska. Right after the U.S. arrivals orientation at Hilton Dallas Hotel, I boarded a plane at Ronald Reagan National Airport onward to Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport in Atlanta, Georgia. There, I had a connecting flight to Anchorage, Alaska, which took eight hours. What did I do in Alaska? I had a grand reunion with Azir Eligado, an alumnus of Guayan National High School and a KLS alumnus too. Azir fetched me at Ted Stevens International Airport in Anchorage. And from there, my Alaskan adventure began. Azir took me to Flat Top Mountain, a leading tourist destination in Anchorage. Here is the video of my arrival in Alaska.
If you're in Alaska for a vacation, savor its great natural beauty by trekking. Let me take you to that trek to Thunderbird Falls. Hazir and I brought along with us his four babies, Bentley and Paris. It took us about an hour to reach the viewing deck of Thunderbird Falls. Let me share this video of that energizing trek. Aboard the Alaska Railroad, I was able to see magnificent landscapes and waterscapes from Anchorage to Seward. That eight-hour train ride back and forth was made possible by my gracious host in Alaska, Hazir Diaz Elegado.
Omega Joy and Abu Shai, a science teacher of Buayan National High School, was also given the opportunity to chaperone KLS finalists from the Philippines to the USA. It was in August 2019. Teacher Joy Shaik accompanied KLS Batch 16. Teacher Shaik is both a teacher volunteer and a parent volunteer for AFS. She is the mother of the late Shar Jathia Anabu Shaik, KLS alumna Batch 13. Shar's demise is such a great loss to the local AFS Jensen community. Her dedication to community service was undeniably remarkable. We congratulate Teacher Joy Shai for raising a brave and smart daughter who will forever have a soft spot in the hearts of intercultural learning advocates here and abroad. Here's Teacher Joy Shaik as a parent and teacher volunteer for AFS. Teacher Joy was delivering a message during the KLS Parents and Schools Orientation at Holy Trinity College of General Santa City in 2019 when this photo was taken. In the same AFS activity, here's Teacher Joy with fellow volunteers from AFS Jansen Community. In one frame, we can see Teacher Joy with her daughter, the late Shar Jathia Shaikh of KLS, Batch 13. Here is a mandatory pose of KLS Batch 16 with Teacher Joy during their flight to the USA in August 2019. That's her taking a selfie while waiting for their flight. Here's a photo of Teacher Joy and Mia Rasiv Ayamen, one of the KLES finalists from AFS Chanson Community, Batch 16. This photo was taken at the YES Arrivals Orientation in the USA in August 2019. It's heartbreaking to lose a daughter whose dreams and aspirations were not only for herself, but also for her family and the community. Let's continue to uphold Teacher Joy and her family in our prayers. We highly appreciate Jalin, Hazir, Albanzar, and Kenneth for their strength, courage, and determination when they willingly left their respective families to follow their dreams across miles and oceans. We also take this opportunity to thank their parents who wholeheartedly allow them to spread their wings and experience new things that definitely help shape them into the kind of persons they are now. Grateful acknowledgement also goes to AFS Intercultural Programs Philippines for the tremendous opportunities that have been extended to the students and teachers of Buayan National High School. Looking forward to more brave souls from Buayan National High School will follow the footsteps of Jalin, Hazir, Albanzar, and Kenneth. 